Hey everybody, how you doing today? Good to see you. Today, we're going to try to make a makeshift trailer. I can pull around with the tractor to collect brush and just little tasks around the house here. And I'm going to try to do it all with stuff I've got without having to buy anything. For starters, I need welding wire, which I have some. This was a gift from Phoenix 1911. He sent that to me last year and I've never used it yet. So I'm gonna be using that today. My welder is out of wire. I'm also going to be using, let's turn the camera a little bit here. See that framework right there that's leaned up against the fence? That's a piece that Crazy Dave's builds brought to me when he came up and got that motorcycle from me. He gave me that and a bunch of other scrap steel. And that's 47 inches tall, or wide. And I've got a bunch of this fencing that you see is propped up against, left over, that's rolled up, and it's over here on the, by the fence in the backyard. And I should be able to stretch that out and make a covering for that so the brush and stuff doesn't fall through and just wire it to it. And we come out here in the backyard and you see this old barbecue. Let's see how these wheels on it. And those actually came off the back of an old push mower years ago. And I put them on that barbecue because the base of it has rusted away. <clears throat> and it's done that again. I'm no longer using that barbecue. So I'm gonna see if I can cut that axle and weld it onto that frameage and make it work. So yeah, I guess all we gotta do is start getting into it. tip that I like to do every time I put on a new roll of welding wire I take my uh, I take my nozzle out and my cover off and I blow compressed air through there after I've got the wire out and if you watch right in here when you do that you'll see dust and stuff come out of that inner shield Of course, I just blow everything off, and I also like to take a little WD-40 or some sort of light oil, put on here, where that roll of new wire is going to be spinning, to make sure it doesn't have anything to create excess drag on it. And then I put it back together. I also like to put a new tip in. Even though the other one's not clogged up or whatever, it's, it's done its work. It's a little oxidized and tarnished and stuff. So I just like to use a new one if I have one. Since I'm starting with a new roll of spool, or a new spool of wire, go with a new tip, a clean cable. Uh, you're going to get the best you can get, you know what I mean? It's all right. All right, let's get them wheels. sizing things up here this axle is like six and a half inches off the ground and my mount on the back of the tractor looks like it's about 12 and a half or say 13 so that means one of two things well I either raise the platform of the trailer up or build a dog leg in my 
the hitch portion so it comes out and goes up. And I'm thinking, I know me, I'm not gonna be wanting to bend down that low. So I'm probably gonna raise it up. Six and a half, 12 and a half. So I say raise it up seven inches. And make it easier for me to unload when I get stuff on it. I'm getting old, I don't like to bend over that much. <laughs> All right, here's what I got so far. I'm gonna use this to come up like a receiver. And this is a 5 8 piece of all thread with two nuts. You know, I can just slip it through the hole and tighten it down with a lock ring and it will stick up like so. And what I'm gonna use for the other end is I've got my piece here that I'm going to use for a tongue and I took a piece of pipe that fits it and I made it to where it hinges that way when I go to if it's not at the exact right angle it will actually pivot a little bit to help me get it on and off and all I did was drill some holes, put a piece of all round bar through there, and welded a washer on each side to hold it. No nuts or bolts. It's kind of a fixed thing. Not real pretty, but it should work. Remember, I'm doing this quick and on the cheap. So, now I just got to find the center. Figure out how much tongue I want exposed. I'm thinking like two feet. This thing's actually mammoth. That's four feet wide. <laughs> It's huge, you know, but it'll carry a lot of brush and crap and if I ever decided I don't like it, I'd cut it up and redo it. I'm just slapping this together real quick. So anyway, that's where I'm at. All right, so I've got all the bottom of it welded together. All the bottom side of it is welded. I would have to flip it over and weld everything from the top side. And I thought, well, while I've got it upside down like this, I'll just go ahead and do my wheels thing and found out all the bearings, two out of the four bearings on that rascal are rusted solid. It's like, so that's not gonna work. I've got to uh, figure out a way to combat that. And I'm still trying to do this on a cheap tour. I don't have to spend any money. So I'm gonna have to think about it tonight and see what tomorrow brings. And I'm going to clean up here and put stuff away. Call it a day for today and give it some thought. And I'll get back to you. All right. Well, it's a beautiful day out here. And uh, I'm going to try to cut these rusted bearings off of there. So I can get the other ones and replace them. And so let's have a see if that'll work. Anyway, you get the idea. All right, well, I got it apart. I just want to show you this. Look at that. Hey, what do they call that? Uh, well, anyway, they cut them in half, you know, so you can see what's inside them. And those bearings are just rusted in there. They didn't even fall out. Huh. Anyway, all right, I'm going to go to the hardware store and see if I can find some bearings. And if that works out, 
and we'll be on our way. All right, so I got my wheels all apart, went over to get some bearings, took an old one with me just to make sure that I could, knew that I was getting the right one. And over there, they come in these little packages like this. You've all seen these little packages. And right on there, it says the size. This is one half by one and one eighth. That's what size bearings these are. And uh, I opened up a little compartment there and there was four of them in there. I thought, well, that's perfect, you know? And so I've done this before, you know? So I thought I better look at each one and make sure it's right. One and a half by eight, one and a half by eight. One and a half by one and one eighth. One and a half by one and three eighths. And I was like, what? Oh, crap. That's all there was, was four. Or three, I'm sorry, three. And so I'm thinking to myself, dang it. Well, I've got one that's I could use, even though it's partially rusted. You know, it's partially rusted. But it would get by in a pinch. But I really want it all new since this is going to be, you know, give it every fighting chance to last as long as it can. And I thought, you know what? I said to myself, you know what? If this one bearing is in the wrong pocket of this display case, maybe the one I need is in another pocket on this display case. So I opened up two more compartments. And sure enough... There was this dirty looking old bearing. His package looks like it's been out to the farm and back. Stuffed in there. And it was in it was the right size. <laughs> I was like, yes! 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 I love it when a plan comes together, man. So I'm glad I took the time to look and then I took the time to look some more. You know what I mean? Otherwise I would have come home with a mixed match set and I would have been real frustrated. So anyway, that worked out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this in half. I got it all deburred and took a wire wheel to it, cleaned it up. I'm gonna cut it in half, uh, line it up on the axle there, and weld it in place. I'll probably attach my wheels to it so I know exactly where they're gonna be and make sure I got the proper clearances I need and stuff like that. But yeah. I wanna share with you guys a tip on trailer building that I, I knew about when I was putting this together yesterday. You want 60% of your load forward of the axle. That does not include the tongue and the hitch part. That's just your base trailer, the base of your trailer. And I had put that tongue hitch, welded it on the other end, and I had like 40% of my load forward of the axle. So I had to cut that all off and move it I knew that when I did it, but I did it anyway, <laughs> and it wasn't right. So I cut it off and moved it to the other side and welded it back. And it may not be exactly 60%, but you can see that the majority of the base will be forward of the axle. And that just makes it pull straight. It's basically important if you're going to be getting out on the road with a trailer, yeah, you get your... Uh, your load weight too close to the front and it'll fishtail all over the place on you. This makes them pull straighter. So, yeah, I just want to share that with you in case you didn't know, now you will. So, I've clamped another piece of steel on here just so I have something to prop that axle up against to make sure they're both straight. I don't get them cocked sideways. Kind of keeping things true with the rest of the world. Got all my spacers and everything in place already. So all I gotta do now is go in here and hold it up against there, put a tack on it. Go back and weld her in good. Then I'll move the, that bar out of the way and weld the other side of it. 
Should be good as gold. Got a lot of work. <laughs> Ta-da! Alright. There it is. I didn't paint it or anything. I don't care about that. I just want something to put that brush on. I used to use a well barrel. And it would just always... It wasn't big enough, you know? It was never enough. So this will be nice. I can put it behind the mower and pull it. And it didn't cost me anything except for those bearings I had to buy. Which... Ended up costing me $15. Those bearings were $3 a piece plus tax. 15 bucks. And, uh... But for $15, I got a nice little trailer. And I think you can see the wire mesh on there. I just got it, like, baling wire attached. I didn't try to weld that or anything or do anything fancy. So all I got to do now is bring the mower out here and make sure it actually hooks up. So I'll have to put the dogs in the house so I can open the gate. And bring that out here and give it a try. All right, let's see how this works. That looks good to me. That looked like it worked pretty good to me. I'm going to uh, take it around front and actually start doing some lawn work. But before I do that, I want to show you guys something on this tractor I got. I don't know what that backfire is all about, but I like the fact that that amp meter works. That's awesome. All right. Time for me to get busy. Here's my trailer. Next time you see it, I should have a bunch of brush on there. All right. Look at that. What a mess. Everything is just completely overgrown. That's my front yard, my front porch. What a mess. Well, there's a little bit of it. I need to sweep off and stuff, but. I think you can see why the wheelbarrow was, why I wanted the trailer instead of the wheelbarrow. I haven't even got to that one yet. Personally, I like it when it's all grown up, but when it starts interfering with your walkways, you gotta do something. I think I'm going to go unload that before I do any more so it doesn't fall all off on my way back there. Alright, so that being said, all in all, thanks for coming by and checking this out. 
I got work to do. You guys probably got something else to do. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Y'all take care. And, uh, see you later. Bye-bye.